Hello everyone. Many electronics stores sell such a set for self-assembly of the power supply, which, by the way, has pretty good characteristics. Sometimes this kit is sold with a surprise, because of which the power supply does not work. I came across just such a set. What kind of surprise is this, and how to deal with it, I will tell you in this video. In addition, I want to show you a novelty among multimeters. GVDA company, which specializes in the production of measuring instruments and various soldering tools, has released a new modern multimeter GD128+. This is an excellent multimeter with many useful functions, one of which is the ability to charge from USB and, accordingly, the built-in battery. To get more information about this multimeter, and also, if desired, you can order it by clicking on the link that will be in the description under this video. The GD128 Plus multimeter comes in a box like this. On the reverse side, as usual, the characteristics of this device are indicated. This multimeter can measure a constant voltage up to 1000 volts alternating voltage up to 750 volts, the current strength is up to 10 amperes, resistance up to 100 megaohms, capacity up to 100 millifreds, frequency up to 10 megahertz. Also in this device there are additional functions, such as a flashlight, temperature measurement, measurement of relative, as well as minimum and maximum values, electric field detection, phase wire detection and others. Inside the box there is a dense fabric cover, in which it is very convenient to store a multimeter. And here is the complete set of the device. User manual in English. Comfortable and high quality probes with a soft and, quite possibly, silicone wire. The measurement limits of these probes are up to 10 amperes and up to 1000 volts. Also included is a thermocouple for temperature measurement. And a USB cord for charging the multimeter. Well, here is the multimeter itself. The device is quite large, but at the same time it has a pleasant appearance and a convenient location of buttons, as well as connectors for probes. As I said, the GD128 Plus multimeter has a built-in battery. Now let's see what kind of battery is installed here. The battery capacity is 1200 mAh thanks to which this multimeter will be able to work for a long time without recharging. To turn on the device, you need to press and hold this button. When the multimeter is turned on, the auto mode is set by default. Also on the screen we see the ambient temperature, 25 degrees. By the way, this multimeter has another very useful feature. When switching measurement modes, the connectors where the probes should be installed are highlighted. A trifle, but nice. In automatic mode, the multimeter itself determines what it needs to measure, voltage, resistance, or electrical circuit. As you can see, the multimeter copes with the automatic mode perfectly without any delays. Now, using this function button, 
you can manually select the desired measurement mode. The first mode is voltage measurement. In order for the device to switch to the AC voltage measurement mode, you need to press the cell button. 250 volts. Using the range button, you can set the measurement range. That is, either it will be tens of volts, or hundreds of volts or units. If you press and hold the row button, the multimeter will switch to the relative value measurement mode. Using the max per minute button, you can fix the maximum and minimum measurement values, and the hold button saves the measurement value on the screen. The next mode is resistance measurement. 680 ohms. Next, check the electrical circuit. Then check the diodes. And capacity measurement. The next measurement mode is millivolts. Then the frequency. In the household network, the frequency is 50 Hz. Then the temperature measurement. In order to measure the temperature, you need to connect a thermocouple instead of probes. The next mode is the detection of an electric field and the search for a phase wire. And the next mode is the measurement of small currents, that is, milliamps, and large currents up to 10 amperes. When you press and hold the cell button, the flashlight turns on. So, what conclusion can be drawn? The GD128 Plus multimeter definitely deserves attention. The built-in battery, a variety of measurement modes and additional functions, as well as clear and fast operation without any delays, and a pleasant appearance make working with this device very comfortable. By the way, I'm going to need it now. Here is the power supply that I talked about at the beginning, it has pretty good characteristics. There is voltage regulation from 0 to 30 volts, current adjustment up to 3 amperes, as well as overload and short circuit protection. When I received this kit for self-assembly, I assembled it in just a couple of hours. Then I applied the supply voltage, and nothing worked. Now I'll show you how it looked. The maximum voltage that can be applied to the input of this power supply is 24 volts. The transformer I use produces exactly this voltage. When the voltage is applied, the LED immediately lights up signaling an overload. At the same time, neither the voltage nor the current are practically regulated. I have repeatedly checked the correct installation of parts, checked all transistors, diodes and capacitors, but to no avail. After that, I bought 5 new TL081 operational amplifiers, after they were replaced there was no result, the power supply did not work, and in the end I forgot for it. But recently I decided to try to repair this power supply again. I checked all the parts installed here again and also ordered 20 pieces of new TL081 operational amplifiers. But before installing them on the board, I assembled such a simple device. The device for checking the TL071 and TL081 chips is simple, but very useful. I checked 20 chips that I bought, and about half of them turned out to be non-working. Here in this video you can watch the whole process of assembling and testing this device.
After installing the working chips, a voltage appeared at the output of the power supply unit, which is smoothly regulated from 0 to 27 volts. Now I will check the power supply under load. First, I will connect the LED strip. Now the power supply is working fine, and there is current and voltage regulation. Now I'll check the current adjustment. With serviceable TL081 chips, this power supply works great. As you can see, the faulty TL081 chips that are sold in this kit can be an unpleasant surprise, because of which the power supply does not work. But if these chips are replaced with obviously serviceable and working ones, then the power supply works great. This concludes this video. If you liked it, then click the subscribe button so as not to miss the new video on my channel, which will appear very soon. I thank you for watching and see you soon.